Parks here with Stephen. Stephen's promoting his new book. Stephen wrote a book called uh, Adler's. Stephen Adler's book, My Appetite for Destruction. Oh, hey there. There he is. There's Stephen. And there's Chip. <laughs> Look at Chip's enough. Hey, Stephen. Ste is Stephen going to walk right out of the studio? Just he keeps walking. <laughs> <laughs> Good seeing you. Good you seeing you. Yeah, sit down. We'll talk. <laughs> where's, where's the monkey crew? <laughs> there's the crew. <laughs> Come on. You got to get on mic, Stephen. <laughs> Stephen, get on mic. <laughs> <laughs> all right. He's hey, Chip. spreading the love all around. <laughs> How are you? I'll hug you later. <laughs> Steven's got a death grip on you. He's like a boa constrictor. <laughs> you could squeeze a man to death, couldn't you? Nothing like good love, Howard. Look at this team up, huh? Chip's <laughs> enough. One of the great guitar players of all time. Steven, you know, for every band out there that's a Guns N' Roses, there's no. 10 million that didn't really that, get the big payday, right? That, well, that's, the, that's why Guns N' Roses was such a unique thing. And a, like Aerosmith or Queen. You know, it's hard to get four or five guys together that actually, there's so many musicians, yeah. but if you get four or five guys that, that had the same goals, the same dream, and the same drive. It's and the odds hard. of meeting each other. Yeah. But you were friends with Slash since you were what? 11. 11 years old. Have you reconciled with Slash? Of I re course. I remember on Celebrity Rehab, you cried one time. You said, I miss Slash. One, one time. <laughs> many times. Have, since Celebrity Rehab, yeah. A, have you maintained a sober lifestyle? I've had, you know, to be honest, I've had, as all addicts, um, relapses. Right. But I've got five months going right now. Right now. It's been right now. How you feeling? I feel wonderful. You feel clear? I have a new book. I got a new single. When it, he relapses, what does he do? What does he do? Well, you, you, well, you know what? This is really... Heroin. <laughs> no, no. Oh. You know what happened no. on this last relapse? Right. And it might sound kind of crazy because of all the drugs I have done. Uh -huh. Pot. Oxycontin. Oh, I Oxycontin. never, I never uh, did that before. You found a new you one. You found something new. Yeah, you know, science look. actually told me about that. Now, and they he, call that hillbilly heroin. So I, why try it though? You knew. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was one of those, you know. Chip, oh, you this won't hurt. Chip, we see yeah. this. We see and this all the time. Three weeks later, I'm back in rehab. Oh. <laughs> Chip, we see this all the time. The rock and roll lifestyle, the drugs. It's too much, right? You smoke weed a lot, right? Tons. Tons. Now, when you're around Steven, you're recording with your new band, do you try to curtail your weed smoking around him at all? No, not. And I'm not bothering him when it comes yeah, to that. That doesn't a, bother me. It's a small me. part of my lifestyle. No, nothing bothers me with other people. I mean, I, I wouldn't particularly want to watch people shooting up right. or smoking crack, you know, because it's an ugly thing to see to begin with. It's tempting. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, but but Chip, I'm an addict, but and Chip, I'll always I know, be one. But Chip smokes so much weed. I know that. He's, he's, he's like a, a cloud of smoke around I'd here. rather like, have like smoke weed yeah. than cigarettes. Linus. Right. Okay. The dirty blanket. All right. So let's, let's get down to it. The new book is out. Stephen Adler has written a book, believe it or not. That's right. They said he'd never write it, but he did. I and, did, with um, Larry Spangliola. And, and the book is called uh, My, My, Appet Appetite. My Appetite for Destruction. It's got the Guns N' Roses logo on the cover. And uh, it is in stores <laughs> now. And it is an incredible life. It is an incredible life. Well, and you know, well, it's been very emotionally and spiritually healing for me doing this. The thing that kills me, and this is what kills me, because I, I love musicians and I love rock and roll and I love Guns N' Roses. Yes. You know, the odds, let's get back to it. The odds of making it in this business are a gazillion to one. And then for you guys not to be together, for you to destroy it with the drugs and everything, it kills me. Because Chip knows how uh, rough yeah, it is. Yeah, and I do, too. Yeah, you know I, how many I, I, guys that you played with, and they were all around at the same time, and none of them made it. Yeah, yeah. none of them's doing anything. Yeah. And Let's review. Uh, Let's review. No. This is all from the book now. Steven started smoking weed at age 11. Good Lord. Where'd you get weed at 11? From oh, Chip. Believe me, kids, uh, 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 <laughs> kids out there at 11 years old are smoking weed. Really? Right, right. There's and a lot of masturbation, a lot of drinking, and a lot of smoking going on oh at, at the age at of 11. 11. Now, 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 <laughs> now, Stephen, is everything in what the book true? The age of because innocence? I remember from Celebrity Rehab, when you're, it was very dramatic, your mother came into oh, a yes. session. And she says, oh, Stephen lies about everything. <laughs> Stephen's lying about all, everything he says. I was a great mother. Stephen's full of shit, basically. And it set you off. You just were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Where's your relationship with, with your mother? And is she telling the truth that you are exaggerating? Um, 
I there's some exaggeration because once you get at the period that you know my mom came into my life again there with you know on the celebrity rehab thing. Right. I was coming off of the drug, so I was very you know cloudy, and it, right. things weren't. In, but, right, cloudy well, right, yeah. but cloudy schmouty. But cloudy schmouty. I didn't I, lie. She definitely did, did those things, and, right. it, and it hurt me very much. I mean, the things you said about your mother on celebrity uh, rehab, I felt for you. I ached for you because you said. I was thrown out of my own home. My mother remarried. I guess your stepfather or something didn't yes. want you in the house. She stuck up for the stepfather, threw you out on the street at age 14. 14. I 14. 11. 11. <laughs> at age 11, you were thrown out of your chip. Can yeah. you imagine? My mother would never do that. But, but right. I, you know, at the time, you don't think, you, know, you think that's the worst thing happening. But now, you know, 30 years later, if she didn't, I would have never met Slash. Is she saying you're I mean, luck? All this wouldn't have happened. Well, that's true. But then again, the last 20 years wouldn't have sucked either. <laughs> You mean you but, met Slash? But I didn't make him suck. I you, made it You suck. met Slash because when you were thrown out of the house, was he in a similar situation? He was living on the street kind no, of thing? No, no. I went to live with my grandmother. Right. And he was living with his grandmother. Right. You know, and we just met at school. And you were kindred spirits because you both didn't have your parents. Yeah. You ached for your parents. And we had a desire to do music, you know, play music. Why was he living with his grandparents? What had his parents done? <sighs> well, his mother and father separated. Right. Nothing bad. His parents wonderful. They ran off, did their own thing, and their yeah, son well, had to go live with grandma and grandpa. Yeah, well, they're, you know, his m mom and dad were Unfucking Thank rock. God for grandma and grandpa. You never yes. had, you never had <laughs> children. I learned a lot from grandma and grandpa. You never had children of your own, did you? No, I have three dogs. You have three dogs. And the reason you probably never had children is you said to yourself, you know what? I never got to be a child, really. I had huh? to leave my home. I can't give anything to a child because I'm still... Or maybe I'm you still... secretly say, you know, those bastards are caught. They do nothing but cause trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, look what the trouble I caused my parents. I don't want to go through what they went through. Do. Stephen, because I think this is so unthinkable, how does one's mother come to you and tell you to get out? How did she do it? She walks hey, up I, to you and says, What's the goodbye. No, no. I just came home from school and all my stuff was on the sidewalk. Wow. And then my grandmother, you know, showed up like a half hour later. I was what sitting the on the street. Fuck. Well, my father. Well, of my course mother, you're angry I, at her. Yeah. Well, you know, I have abandonment issues. I'm you're sure. goddamn right you yeah. do. And then what happened with, with Slash, I felt abandoned again. So then I totally went over the edge. You guys, you got to read the book I, I and you'll see all the, and, I you know, understand. everything in there. He doesn't mother, have abandonment issues. He was abandoned. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't have an, you don't have an imaginary <laughs> abandonment. But your mother must have been embarrassed when she went on Celebrity Rehab. So she goes, oh, Steven's making it up. I never threw him out of the house. <laughs> she, she told me this after, after the, you know, came out. She said, She's in this restaurant in Vegas, and a, a gentleman walks up to her and says, you know, Deanna, you're not the worst mother in the world. And he points to his mother and goes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom loved you, Chip, right? Uh, yeah, I've, I've been so blessed with a great mother and father. They really set the tone for me. And when you were talking about pot before, I don't think anything I've done has, has hindered my career. I've got 19 albums with Enough Snuff, a right. long, lustrous career. I've done records with Journey and Santana and right. Steve Miller being all these bands, and yes. now I'm playing with Steven Adler from Guns N' Roses. Right. We're making brand new music, Adler's Appetite, and I'm real happy about it. I think we got a good, a good chance to one more punch. Understood. Uh, oh, Steven, we got a big punch, my Steven, brother. We're not done. Going back to the book, we're going to get to the band, but first I want to uh, promote your book. Yes, thank you. Did you ask your mom why she threw you out? In other words, if I came home and all my shit was on the, uh, and believe me, my shit was embarrassing. <laughs> I've seen what I would have ended up on the front lawn, <laughs> bunch of nudist magazines <laughs> and, and a porno reel. When you w w and dildos, but I don't want to talk about it. Right? Maybe, maybe maybe one or two gay magazines. I don't know. I don't know what was in there. But listen to me. What do you? Now I know why your father used to always say, "Just shut up, mom." <laughs> why did you? Why did you? For God's sake, when you, did you say when you, your mother throws you out at your eleven? Now I remember being eleven. You're a little kid. Oh, a little. You, I look at kids now. They're I can't, unbelievable. Did you did you get on your hands and knees and say, "Mommy, no. please don't throw me out"? No, I. You know what? I, I in, it, when I look back, you know how it all started was when I met a garage band, who were you know older kids lived down the street, had a garage band, and it was the first time I ever drank. Right. And I beer bong six old English eight hundreds. Geez, you dive right old. in. So what a way I, to start. I, I, I sort of remember, I was trying to leave, and then I fall off my bike, and all I remember is the th like three guys walked me back to my house down the street, knocked on the door, and ran. 
<laughs> and I walk in, and my mother's having a Tupperware party. <laughs> And I just look at everybody and just throw up in front of everybody and pass down my bed. <laughs> so you were so a I bad think that kid. was like the beginning. Right. So your mother had had I enough. wasn't bad. Right. You know, I wasn't hurting people. You know, I was just young and, and energetic and wanted to experience life. A real mother would have put her arm around you and said, Stephen, you're hurting yourself. I need to talk to you about this. What are you doing? You're, drink if you, you're drinking at 11 years old. Well, that I was just the first time. It didn't right. go nuts. For, you know. But it would have been a nice, reassuring thing. But she threw you out and then... There you were. And as you say, you've turned it into something good. And you say, well, I wouldn't have met Slash. But yes. but, but please, I mean, give me a break. I mean, You that's, could live without that. Yeah, believe yeah. me. But I had, I've met I, Slash. I'm fine. I had a great, you know, besides, you know, in, in my book, you know, I talk about the sexual abuse and the drug abuse. Now, let me talk younger. to you about sexual, oh. sexual abuse yeah. for a second. Because this is unbelievable to me. You've had so much gay sex, really. No. Oh, I mean, I mean, I didn't think, have so much gay sex, Howard. You attracted we'll, to we'll Chip discuss, at all? We'll discuss the hand jobs <laughs> and Diamond Dave and hundred bucks he owes me later. I'm going to read you some stuff. <laughs> I'm going to read you some stuff here. When Stephen was 14 years old and in the eighth grade, um, he had sex. This is a female. A thirty-six year the thirty-six year old mother of Slash's girlfriend. Good lord. So Slash is in a room fucking his girlfriend and you go and fuck the mother. Yes. You How are does that something. Work? Yeah. It How, just it's one of those things in life that just happens. Was the mother super hot? She's a very sweet lady, yes. That's a great experience. So you're sitting there talking to her while Slash is doing her daughter? And, well, yeah. Well, and we, actually, she's the one who taught me how to roll joints. <laughs> All right, here's the molestation. Here's the molestation stuff, because this, yes. this, this is really not funny. Yes. All right. All right. As a teenager, um, you went to a club. They would give you quaaludes, and then they would have their way with you. No, no, no. You make it all well, crazy. Well, well, this is what it this says. Was just a one, you know, it was one thing. Were you misquoted it, in your I own book? I was misquoted. <laughs> 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 it, was, it was just one time that happened. The managers it, it was, of the club. Yeah, they, they, it was an older teenager and an older guy. Um, they gave me drugs. Right. And they took advantage of me. They gave you what, hand jobs and, uh, and no, blew you? No, they, they had, you know... Took advantage. The of manager me. of the club blew you. Did they? Did they try to put it in your ass too. Of course, they did. They did. Oh, I was okay. afraid of that. Now, Steve. Well, that you can't get sexually abused and not get fucked in the ass. But I Steven, know. I was like, oh, that, that's the whole thing of abuse. Steven. I don't want those quaaludes. They make my ass hurt. Yeah. 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 Steven. <laughs> it's Steven. Once that happened to me, I'd be off drugs forever. <laughs> I but would I was to, a, forget Doctor Drew. <laughs> Doctor Drew should have fucked you in the ass and got you right out of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you go. No disrespect to Dr. Drew. I love People him. People would pull up beside you in their cars, and this is when your life was in drugs and stuff, and ask if I wanted to smoke a joint. I'd be like, sure. The next thing you know, you're completely baked, and they're touching you all over, and you don't know what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. All you know is that an orgasm feels good. Anybody can make you come, and in that state, I didn't have the presence of mind to give a damn. I was used, abused, whatever. So again, these drugs mm. lead to some gay uh, shenanigans. Well, yeah, but it, you're, it's not as many as you, as you make it sound like. But you know, I was growing, this was the <laughs> yeah. this was the late, you know, late mid late seventies. Yeah, Hollywood. I grew up in off Santa Monica Boulevard. Fairfax. I have a gay cousin. You know, just having... walk into Slash's house, you know, there was all the, you know, gay bars and stuff like that. And uh, I was a cute and young, you know, teenage boy. You were a handsome kid. Yeah. I mean, At age 14, Stephen was raped by the guys who invited him to, them to, the, to, to an apartment to get high. Jeez. <laughs> that, that was the same thing. And they hurt that you That was badly. the same people in the club. Same people in the club. Yeah. That was the same night. Did same you learn night. not to hang out with those people? That mm -hmm. only happened at one night. <laughs> I, it was, you know, it was, the club was, it was a Starwood. It's awful. Yeah. And, you know, it was off Crescent Heights in Santa Monica. So, like, actually the first club I saw Nikki Six play right. with the band London. Well, let me tell you something. You and I learned how to play drums from hanging at the club and watching all the bands, mm -hmm. you know, do sound check and perform. After it all. It was just one bad night. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but one bad night is all it takes to last a, a lifetime. lifetime. Sure. So you, actually what I want to do when, when I get home is I'm going to make a big fire <laughs> and I'm going to throw the book in the fire and I'm going to take the next 10, 15 years and make a new story with my life. There you Steven, go. Stephen, uh, but you more than made take up. the past. These few gay experiences, as you say, were behind you because you made up with it with women through the roof. But do Chip. you think that was an overcompensation? <laughs> no. 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 That was a dream come true. <laughs> Chip, this guy <laughs> fucked more women 
right? Yeah. You know, right? Yeah. You, I know you did a lot of sex when you were in Enough's Enough. I saw you one night in a club. There were a whole bunch of broads back there. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> but this guy, he's, he puts them all to shame, doesn't he? Yeah, he's been Dude. very blessed, as he would say. <laughs> right. His star, life started off tough as a kid, and it progressed as he got more successful. Here's the rock star lifestyle. You'll learn about it in Steven's new book. Here it is. You ready? Slash and I would get these girls and fuck them back and forth. <laughs> now listen to this. Be, did you do that with your band? Did you fuck did some you girls and share? share with Donnie and this and that and the other thing? No. Never. And, and, anybody, no. and he had Vicky Fox in his band. So anybody that, that Vicky was with, nobody wanted to be with. <laughs> 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 Who was a better lay, you or Slash, sexually? You have a bigger penis than Slash? No, Slash is, is hung like a horse. He is. Yeah. And is he well, better? He's, got, he's, part, he's part black. Right. <laughs> so he's got that going for him. You didn't have that. Uh, I'm, every, you, I'm like, you know, I'm part Jew. Oh, okay. <laughs> Became sex everywhere, anywhere, anytime. It just happened. If I saw a girl I'd like, uh, I like, I approach her, and that would be it. You and me, right now. There was no such thing as warming up to the situation. Uh, the situation was, hey, bend over and do it. Down on your knees. Wow. How many women you think you had sex with in your entire life? Well, I, let's just say I had nine sex with nine women with Steven Tyler in the back of the tour bus one night. You write about that night. Yeah. You and Steven Tyler, the great yes. Steven Tyler of Aerosmith, a legend. What Love is this him. all Love this him. joint sex, though, Howard? Every, you it's know. a little gay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you ask me, there's too many men around when you're having your sex. Hey, be, believe me, Steven Tyler's got a, a huge rig. Take me okay. back. So it was difficult, but it was like, hey, this is Steven. I'm, I gotta do this. When you, you describe <laughs> in your book, to <laughs> you describe in your book your night with Steven Tyler. You're on the tour bus with him, and there are women there. You're about what nine deep in women. Yeah. Okay. And Steven says, uh, "Watch this." <laughs> And he begins to orchestrate scenarios. Yes. That's his thing. He's a great producer. Great director. <laughs> what does director. that mean, a great producer? What would he say? What would he tell these oh, women to do? You two girls go over here. You start eating her pussy. You eat her pussy. You could suck on her teeth. You come over. Both of you are start sucking off Steven over here. Right now. Oh, you two come over here. You start licking my ass. You start oh. sucking my balls. You start my inner. It's just like a pile of flesh in the back of the bus. When you're seeing uh, something like this. Who knows what whole, what cock was going in. Steven, when you I can't believe I don't have AIDS and I came out of this alive. Yeah, how did you? How did did you come out of this alive? I don't know. No rubbers are used, right? Everyone's of fucking. Not. No babies out of this. Nothing. No, well, as far as I know. Did you pull out? Was that your thing, or did you come of inside? Of course, you pull out. As the, that's what the face is for. And you never said to yourself, "Oh my God, this is so dangerous." Uh, I, I, I know I'm pulling out. I could get her pregnant, or she could have AIDS, or something like this. Because you can't have much respect for a woman. I mean, what is with these women? What do you think is going yeah, on? Where do you with them? get these women? That they, Robin, you, you're a woman. You you explain. This. I can't explain this. You can't explain this. <laughs> Stephen, do you become numb to sex and love and all of that kind yeah. of thing? Well, if, drugs and alcohol it numbs everything. And so, when you're young, you could drink. And do drugs and still fuck. Did you, you could still get a hard on. But once you get like our age, you can't drink like that. You can't do drugs and still get a hard on. It's like, uh. Speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> You're not doing what they were doing. I'm high. Well, and yeah, have well a now that I'm, I'm not high, doing the drugs. I'm high right it. now and I have a boner the size of this room. <laughs> All right, listen to me. So when you're in the Wait bus with Steven... <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> when you're in the bus with Steven Tyler and all of this is going on, is there ever a time, now this might sound crazy to you guys, but is there ever Not a time crazy. you feel bad for the women? Do you ever say to yourself, Jesus Christ, what are they doing with their lives, these broads? No. Never. Never. It's rock and roll. It's rock and roll. This There's is, never this a This is time? a dream come true. I would have girls suck on my cock while I'd be watching Family Guy. And I wouldn't even have, heart, even have a heart on it. It was just, just for the fact that they would do it. Wow. You know, oh, all right, go ahead. But did you ever, I mean, <laughs> was there ever love? Yeah, I had my first wife I love, my second wife I love and adore. Mm -hmm. When you're involved in a scene like and that. Wendy. When you're involved in a scene, there's so many bodies on top of bodies. By accident, do you and Steven Tyler start making out and right, then go, oh, shit. Say, do you ever oh, yeah, touch I, each I, other? I felt his rig. Oh. You did. You, you well, squeezed well, not, his rig? Not, not outside the pants. <laughs> right. Because it started off with, he started telling girls what to do, and then I was sitting there going, here, here, come on, suck on his cock. It's no big deal. Here. <laughs> and you're, you're shaking his cock. Yeah, but you I mean, he has pants on. <laughs> you know, I'm going, here, go suck on his cock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned a lot from Tyler. He's a very, very amazing man. Listen to this. <laughs> Stephen and Izzy Stratham would get blowjobs together. Stephen writes, she sucked one of us off while she jacked off the other.
other, and then she would alternate. She swallowed Izzy's load at the moment I came, and I shot all over her face. Of course. That, that many a night. Wild, huh? Many a night. Is, do you That's mi- a rock and roll dream. Do you miss that the most? No. I'm just glad I got to experience it and come out of it alive. Is it? But like now it all seems like a dream, doesn't it? I mean, Yeah, of course. It wouldn't, be bad, it was, to, wouldn't it be bad if you and Chip were there and Robin all of a sudden took her clothes off and started sucking you guys Robin, off like the old yes. days? Yeah. Robin, yes. <laughs> She'll never do fox. it. She's a fox. Robin's a fox. Oh, I've been thinking about Robin for the last year since I was there last. Really? Stephen Wright. Stop that. Slash, <laughs> Stephen Wright slash Duff and I would have contests to see who could get the most blowjobs in a single day, and I won every time. Why did you every, win? Because I, I, Are you, you the cutest? I, 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 I worked harder at it. I cared more. Uh, it, Stephen it was for the band. I was going to do it for the band, and we were going to win. You're proud of that, that you got more blowjobs yeah. than them. Well, Does, what teenage boy, you know, uh, young man in his 20s, wouldn't be proud of that. After a while, don't the blowjobs all blend into one another? I, that's and, what I was saying. I was having a suck on my cock. It wouldn't even be hard. What are the most? Just for the fact that they would do it. What were the most blowjobs in one day? Fifteen. Fifteen blowjobs. And sometimes you wouldn't even come. I wouldn't even come. You could come like maybe when you're that age in the 20s, you come maybe five, six times. I got to tell you something. Sometimes <laughs> if I'm getting a blowjob and I'm with a woman and it's lasting more than two minutes, I feel bad that I'm not coming. And I, I, I would think you would have some remorse would say, Chip, you too, right? Chip's yeah, shaking absolutely. his head. He absolutely. <laughs> but Stephen would say, she sucks all day. He doesn't care. Yeah, it's like a thimble. He's about <laughs> to care. He doesn't care. I mean, Stephen, at some point you look down and go, all right, honey, 20 minutes of sucking. It's yeah, enough. It's enough. No. no. But when you're in your 20s, you, you know, you, ah, go ahead. Do you think that that's a coldness in a sense because you were thrown out of your house, because you didn't have your mother's love? Do you think in a way you were getting back at all women? I'm pretty sure all of it has to, you know, do with that. Every, yeah. You know, everything has to do with how you grew up and what the experiences you had in your growing, you know, strengthening years. You had so many women that at one point you write, Slash and, uh, and you would have orgies with five chicks at a time. And if you didn't like the way one of the chicks looked, if she was a little subpar, you'd send her over to your road crew. To <laughs> right? You, you, I mean, of course. Where the girls, oh, I mean, God. you would cripple a girl yeah, for you, life. You've got to take care of the, you know, the road crew. you got to take care of them. So man. in other words, if there are five girls, one's real fat and gross, you'd say, hey, honey, you leave. And, and, and they would, I mean, that must have crushed the girl's spirit, true? I mean, when you think I, back I, yeah, on it. There's a lot of fat girls got fucked. They did. <laughs> oh, you yeah. weren't that discriminating. <laughs> well, that's very nice of you. I, I, you, you got to remember, Slash is walking around with a rig, you know, like 15 <laughs> inches, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he needs something to... To pack that in. <laughs> now, where does a girl go if she gets rejected by the road crew? Then it's really bad, right? <laughs> you go then? I think you just go home after that and shoot right. yourself. <laughs> Chip, he lived the ultimate rock and roll dream, right? I mean, because the band was so hugely financially and creatively successful, right? That's the ultimate dream. That, that's the dream. Yeah, and I think when you're that age, uh, he overabused the privilege. <laughs> exactly, it's yeah. true. He had a, it was a gift for It him. was a gift. It was a gift. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I blamed, I blamed uh, the guys for letting me down, for throwing me out of the band. Right. I blamed them, but what I realized, you know, by doing this book, is I they didn't let me down. I let them down. Now that you're sober, why can't you say to Axel? Why can't what? you say to Axel, Axel Rose, the lead singer? Listen, Axel, it's time for a Guns N' Roses. Yeah. To get back, I know you got a band with Chip now and all that, and that can go on as well. Oh, Axel has a band with. So what? I don't know who the hell. <laughs> right, exactly. Why can't you sit down with these guys, be the peacemaker, and say, "Listen, guys, we had it all. We could have it again. Let's go on tour. Let's do it. I'm now sober. Slash is sober. Axel, come on, let's sit down and get over. Everybody's it. sober. It does, Izzy. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? I'm really hoping. Right. That Axel will read my book and and see and call realize. Him. Well, I can't call. I don't Why know how to get hold of him. You want me to do it with you? I would love it. But what I want him to do is to read the book and, and maybe he'll realize he how read. close. Oh, yes, he does. He does read. He's, oh, he's very, very. Robin says book he smart. doesn't read. No, he, no, I saw him reading. No, he, you did he, see him? He's a, he's a very. very very intellectual. Why Very did you? Intellectual guy. But I'm hoping he'll read this and see what we had and, and how close we were and how, how much it really sure. meant, not just to us, but to the world. And hopefully he'll, you know, he'll realize that, hey, you know, whatever happened in the past happened. The part it's of the over, book, it's done. I don't hate any of those guys. I love them. The part of the book. Uh, and by I the love way, Axel. Did you ever feel Axel's rig? 
I've seen it. He's another one who walked up. I said, where do these guys come from? The Midwest or something like that with these horse things. You know who's got a big rig? Man on the couch there. Chip's oh, I enough. know. Right? I've seen that thing in action a few times. I know already. Chip, how big are you? Seriously, how many inches are you? At this know, point, but let I'm me see. Let me see his arm. I, I'm very grateful. <laughs> you are grateful. Yes. Right about there. <laughs> what is it with all the guys that you are around? They have big rigs. <laughs> I I mean, I, you seem to attract I mean, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> One night I saw Chip strumming his guitar with his rig. You should have seen it. It's fucking crazy. That's right. All right, let me understand something. You see him tied in a knot. <laughs> <laughs> can you do that, Chip? If I can make a little watch. How many, inches, <laughs> how many inches do you think you are? Seriously. I really don't know. I, it hasn't been a big thing of mine. I'm just grateful that I've. Well, look at how big his hands are. You yeah. get an idea from his hands. Yeah, it's never been a big deal about that. And, and people that are small and stuff, I say, God bless them, because there's other things you can do besides. <laughs> you can die. And, right. and please the woman that way. You don't have to have a huge rig. Have you ever, in a situation in rock and roll, where wo- you pull down your pants and a woman goes, I'm out of here. I can't handle this fucking thing? Or they all, they all comment? They, they attack it. They attack, they attack it. Yeah, it's the last supper. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> very, very blessed. Out of all the rockers you guys are boasting, who has the biggest rig? Is it Chips enough? Uh, I'd say Slash, Slash. Steven Tyler. Look at this Slash, huh? Yeah. And Steven Tyler's got a Tyler's big rig. huge. Unbelievable. Well, geez. I, it frightened me. What? I was embarrassed <laughs> to pull my thing out. I was like, oh, geez. Wow. So, so, I, I, yeah, like you said, all the guys around me. What the hell? <laughs> I don't get it. Imagine Tyler's got a big rig. He's a small guy. Oh, I mean, so look, look at his hands. He's got huge hands. <laughs> <laughs> I got huge hands. I don't know what happened. <laughs> we got the Jew in us. It's the Jew. I'm way Jew. I got slapped the yarmulke. All right, listen to me. Hey, did you see my bar mitzvah picture in there? Let me see that. I right, will take a look. How did you have a bar mitzvah if you grandma, were thrown out of the grandma. house? My grandma. Yeah. Your grandma. Oh, she's a decent woman. I hope oh, when you wow, made money, yeah. you gave her a whole bunch of dough. Uh, oh, of course. You did. Okay. Let me see. And it's a bar mitzvah. Look, it's you doing the baruchas. <laughs> oh, look at that. Here you go. Do you see your picture in there? Here's something. I, let me see my picture. Yeah. I didn't know I made it in yeah, the book. You're such a jag off. You didn't even look at this, did you? I'm going to look at it. Son of a you think I know how to read? <laughs> you see this? Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look what's going on. Look how handsome I am. Holy <laughs> mackerel. Chiseled. How chiseled. <laughs> Good Lord. Hey, so, Stephen. Beautiful. Yeah, but well, uh, this is, I pictures. think, for you. you keep Thank that. you. Is it autographed? No, not yet. Later. I will. All right. Uh, uh, Steve, I didn't understand something from the book. You say that, uh, you know, that you only smoked heroin, you were afraid of needles. Mm. And then on to one point, you said, fuck it. And then you started shooting up. Well, you know, I was, you I was so naive to it that when I watched Izzy and Slash, you know, shoot up, I, I didn't even know that they had to put it in a vein. You know, you know, find the vein, put it in there, drop blood. I thought they just stuck it in your arm and went and shot it in there. Yeah. Right. Who knew? You know, I pff, had no idea. All right. And then one um, one night I let Izzy, you know, do it. I said, you know, everybody in the band, well, not Axel, but the other guys, we're all part of the end. Right. And I, I want to be a part of the band. I want to, you know, I, you they were all in one room partying, right. and I was in a room by myself. And I was like, I want to, you know, be a part of. So I did what, you know, yeah, you were, try with the band. You were left out of that room because you weren't shooting. Yeah, up. and so you felt, in a way. It's such weird peer pressure. Abandonment. Oh, my God. Another abandonment. You wanted Jesus. to be part of the group. I'm learning so much. Exactly. And wow. Lo- I didn't I- even realize that. And just now. God damn it. Hey, by the way, I'm looking at the pictures here. Look at this picture. This is a picture of Steven Tyler's cock. What? It's huge. I can't believe it. Well, the book is called. Let me tell you what's going on. Steven Adler's book, My Appetite for Destruction, is in stores now. He is now an author. Yes. Yes, just like yourself. I want to be a prize winning author like band wise, I'm excited you with Chips Enough. Yes. I love Chip I very love much. My Chippy. And the new My Chippy Poo. Chippy with the big cock. <laughs> uh, the new the new band is called uh Adler's Appetite. Yes, sir. Everything is appetite. The book is yeah, appetite. Well, appetite it just it, it just worked for me. <laughs> it says a, it all. It's a very powerful word. And what is it? You got an album? I got it. Well, we got a single. Right. That I'm hoping that you'll debut for us. All today. right. I'll play a little bit of the single. No, the whole thing. Whole fucking thing. The whole fucking right. two and a half minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, what is this song? You wrote this song? Yeah, the whole band wrote this song. Who uh, we sings? Got, well, we got Ricky the Rig Stitch right. singing. Yes. <laughs> Another rig. Right. See, all around me, the rigs. Right. Jesus. Go Christ. ahead. We got. Alex, the Prince Grassi on All guitar. Right. Yes. Michael, Mr. T. Thomas. Right. On lead guitar. 
and Tips Enough, of course, on right. bass. Right. My rhythm brother. Right. And the Snaggletooth Jag off myself. Right. On drums. Look at that. So you got the whole, <laughs> whole new band, and you guys will be out playing and all of that. Yes. Someone once told me, for drummers, it's a weird gig sometimes, The um, that sometimes a drummer will go to a club, get paid to play the drums to the album, like like you, in your case, a Guns N' Roses album. Well, I, I played with a DJ a few times, not to the Guns N' Roses record, but to... You know other people's you know songs. So you can it show was a lot up of fun, yeah. and people yeah. will watch you play yeah. the drums. Because I know Tommy Lee does that as well. Yeah, I did the same thing. I did the same thing. And the, the Charles Barker, Park, yeah. Barkley, yeah. Uh, Travis Barker, Travis from Barker, from yeah, he does that too. Yeah, really and you still cool. got and you still got the big mansion where Chip is now uh, holed up, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And and so you didn't lose your money after all these drugs and everything. I lost a lot of it for a while, but once I sobered up and got my you know life back together, I started getting it back. Nice. Well, once I stopped giving it to the Colombians and the Mexicans, and I, <laughs> I, then I, I started seeing that my way, I am making money. Good, you know? good. So You're I got to money. save some. Good, I like that. I like yes. to hear that, too. And and you were friends, of course, with the late, great Sam Kinison, weren't you? Of course. Yes. And, but you were not a fan of uh, Jessica Hahn for some reason. Why is that? You didn't like when he was dating her? I really don't give a shit. You don't give a shit about her. <laughs> All right, so uh, I mean, nothing against her. Actually, I was in rehab with her. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I just remembered that. Thank never you. did her. Never hooked up. Yeah. No, what a shame. I used to hang with Kiss Kinnison a long time ago, too. Yes. At yes. yes. CC's right. house in uh, Mulholland Drive. In poison, right. Yeah, everybody yeah, would, we'd stay there till 4 or 5 in the morning down in CC's basement. They had a Brinks truck full of blow. Right. And we would just jam all night, and it was great. <laughs> Donnie V on the drums, put two cigarettes in each hand. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Steve Lukather. I shouldn't be saying these names. I don't want to be disrespectful. <laughs> but, like, all these guys are great players and terrific. Right. Musicians. Yes. Right, right. Not everyone was doing coke. Let's be fair. Most right. were. The coke Most was just were. sitting there. It was, everyone nobody was, was doing using. coke. Everybody was bumping back then. It was fashionable. I, yeah, I think. Right. I think when just in one night, I I ruined a thousand dollars worth of coke just trying to cook it up. No kidding. Turning it into mush. Oh, People dear. were mad at you, yeah. I bet. Too much, oh, too much baking soda. <laughs> Did you guys ever date any Never famous women? Cook. Did you ever get the famous? Well, I know you would say in your book you had a little thing with Rachel Hunter. She was a great beauty. Beautiful woman. You Very had her when she was 18, but you never had yeah. sex with her, did you? You never had, uh, oh, you did. You banged her. Look at you. I don't want Rod Stewart calling me up yeah. again. He'll, yeah, he'll. <laughs> I what, love what Rod Stewart. I respect and love Rod, Rod Stewart him. too much. I Rod called call him? him? Oh, yeah. Why did Rod call him? <laughs> because she was pissed that I mentioned that I made out with his yes. you know, gonna kill future him. wife. Rod said. That I'm going to send him over there to kill you. And I'm calling, dude, I love you so much. I can't believe you're calling me. Wow. <laughs> you want to kill me? I what did you do you. the wrong thing? Wait, because you were, you were into I Rachel mentioned Hunter? It. I mentioned it in an interview. It wasn't while he was seeing her, right? No. No. But. When I mentioned it, he was seeing her. Is that why in the book you say you just made out with her? You don't want to say you fucked yeah, her? Yeah, I don't want to disrespect her. And I don't want to I, I, I look up to Rod too much. Aren't they divorced now? I mean, should he I really... don't know. I mean, what is this? I mean, come on, Chip. Right, it's I hate her pussy. I think they she has, has some a pretty little together. ass. I hate it. Wait, and Chip's just, explaining. What is I this? I think they had some children together, and they out of respect. He don't want to hear anybody yes. speaking about the kid's mom like that. And I understand it. Stephen uh, says, too, he dated uh, Christina Applegate. She's a beauty. Wonderful huh? woman. Yeah, I saw happened? actually on her mother's birthday is on my the same day as my birthday, and we were up at um, the Magic remember? Castle yeah. or, or Yamashiro's, yep. and for my birthday, and she was up there, and I got to see her. And she's very beautiful. Why don't you marry? Why don't you marry that broad? Uh, what was wrong with her? Nothing. I was too fucked up, and she had too much going for her. Yeah, yeah she said, "Hey, I can't hook up with this guy. He's Hell gonna embarrass no. me." That's right. She look what I did to my first wife. Poor thing. It says here, you even had sex with porn star Tabitha Stevens. Is that correct? Is that right? Wait, on your show, the first time I did it in your green room. Is that right? <laughs> you fucked in my green Wait room. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Chip, what do you make of that? <laughs> He'll leave banana juice anywhere. <laughs> no, it's not banana juice, Chippy. It's pineapple okay. banana juice. Oh man. Did, did, I didn't know that was going on in our studio. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> did you eat uh, Rachel Hunter's ass? I like those going on style. Love. You're the man. You're the man. Look at you. All right. So the new band is called uh, Adler's Appetite, as you know. Uh, Chip's enough. A great player. Chip, you married still or what? You're, you're divorced, right? No, I'm single. You're single? Yeah. It's, I think that's the best thing for the right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to hold my attention to the band. Put your attention on 
the band. Uh, yeah. We're in a different time right now. You can come up with a great song and put it instantly on iTunes and Rap C and E Music if you have a name. Right. A new band, it can't be done, but for guys like us who have a history, yes. See, bingo, bingo. Once, one, two, three, until you get 10 songs, then put the record out. Right. Yeah. Why make the fans wait all this time? This is the marketing plan. Make a song, stick it right on the fucking well, internet, and let's go. And go tour. Yeah. And go tour. And go tour. Well, look what happened. We were talking about that the chick food. Did some single and she was on that dance show or whatever. Yeah, just recently. That yeah, she did friend. one single. Are you guys thinking of going on a dance show and maybe uh, uh, promoting the, me the single? Me and Jippy together. Right. Definitely. Would, would you guys team up and go on Dancing with the Stars and dance with each other? Well, our manager, Marty, has to look at the yeah. offer, but I'm interested. Vanessa. <laughs> yeah. And we'll see what Vanessa Chip, you're back. single. You're at Steven's place. You're bringing some broads back there and banging once in a while. You're hitting it real hard no. over there? Nah. That's not at, the party. At this point in my be. life, it's, it's who cares who drives a bus? Let's get to the picnic. Yeah. I'm not playing yeah. any games. What does at that all right mean? Now. You're not playing there's games. Not, there's not much no. sex going you know on in my house. house. <laughs> What's, when is the last time? When is the last time you got laid, Chip? How long has it been? Uh, months and months ago, my old girlfriend Susie that was here. You're kidding me. Yeah. Months and can you believe this? What happened with you guys? I think you hit a certain age and, and you lose that. Yeah, you don't care I'm anymore. More focused I want to focus on, focus on, good on things. other things. I we're want to focus on important things. As I Grandpa don't know. would say, we're we're not built to last, but hopefully our work is. Yes. I don't know what the picnic is or the bus, but it sounds like you've matured. <laughs> <and> <laughs> you're getting out of it. That's right. That's right. So uh, it's all good. Is Chip saying he likes going to picnics. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and and, and Stephen, you getting laid? Or is it like kind of There's no sex going on in my house in my Look life. at this. He had a girlfriend during the show. What happened to her? I had a wife. I still oh, have a wife. Right. Oh, that's oh, right. You, oh. There's still no sex going on I, in this house. And, and, well, I've been married 10 years. You still got the wife? <laughs> of course. I got oh. the wife. And Chip, you got your own room in the mansion? or? Uh, yeah, absolutely. He just gave me the whole house. Uh, they gave the laundry room. They treat me really well. <laughs> How long have you been uh, in, in this room at the house? Uh, uh, I've been there for about a year and a half now. A year oh. and a half? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, I stay out of the way. I don't bother anybody. Mean? We've been together I'm playing with the years. doggies and stuff. <laughs> Rent free. Of course. Yeah, of course Does care. he ever yell at you like, hey, Chip, can you fuck him back off and get out of the kitchen so never. me and my wife can have yeah. some more time? Honest to God, never, yeah. not once. I yell at him, God damn it, get in the kitchen and cook something. Yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Do you do your share of the housework? Of do you have course a clean I up? do. I'm very good. I'm no, very domesticated. I've been married 23 years. Do you clean up the bathroom after you Absolutely. <laughs> Dishes, He's very kitty clean. cat litter. He's very clean. Yeah. yeah, everything. Are there other rock stars living in the mansion or is it just you? No. no one chip is enough. One chip is enough. One chip is enough. Do you ever feel self-conscious being in the house? Like, oh, gee, maybe Stephen and his wife want to be alone, or That's maybe I'm in the way. That's the only thing that bothers me sometimes, because I, I, I cherish their relationship. I know it's like the sanctity of a marriage. Yeah. I try to stay out of the way. I don't want to bother him too much. But then he yells at me, what are you doing? Get over here! <laughs> and what happens if you're sitting in a room, you're watching TV, Stephen's there, the wife's there, and you are watching a show, and Stephen wants a different show? Is it, You have to acquiesce to what Stephen wants. I, I lost. I don't have any there's rights no at all. TV you have no rights. Right. Yeah, when he goes I, to bed at 3, 4 in the morning, yeah. I'll sneak and change the channel and put on something, see, news, some kind of current event to see what's going on in the world because all day it drives me crazy. It's, it's Family Guy and you know all the cartoons and stuff, and I'm losing my mind there. Do, do you ever say, gee, I like the guy, but maybe intellectually, you think you could step it up and stop watching cartoons? Well, actually, those cartoons are very well written. Yeah. They are well written. Seth MacFarlane's a genius. Do you, do you think okay. his, because his uh, uh, childhood was taken away, he's obsessed with the cartoons yes. and he's living it? Yeah, and the you last do. thing I want to do is be a wheel. Uh, I don't want to stop it. I think he's enjoying his life, and I don't want to be... Um, Anywhere where it's gonna be. Would it be fair to say that Stephen should give you a night where you get to be in control? <laughs> no, 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 I don't pay any attention. No control. There. Not uh, with the TV. No. Do you ever <laughs> find yourself getting attracted to Stephen's wife? You're Abs- around her- and I would say it right now because she's very, very attractive. But not at all. No. I'm an older guy right now, yeah. and I, I just like I looked at your wife up- or something. I wouldn't. I don't look at it like that. Stephen yeah. doesn't get upset or jealous. Sometimes she comes down in her 90s. She's yeah. got her no. tits around. No. 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 I feel like, like a beautiful that. sister. Have you ever like accidentally that. seen? Stephen's wife running around the house no nude. comment I no. haven't even seen my wife running around the house nude she never cuddles with you like Stephen gets into a knockdown drag out fight with her she comes Chip I no. have to talk to you no, she's in her no, negligee they, she's like Chip he's a monster he's, and, they, and they start you start hugging her and then one thing leads to another <laughs> no that's a pretty well, good story that might be for the next that you might know, be for the Chips Enough book I'll have you out of the house in a day that might be for the Chips Enough book at Harper College did you ever were you ever taking a bath and she comes in and starts to sponge bathe you I don't Take baths. That's very. <laughs> Have you ever caught her coming out of the shower and you start to dry her off with a towel? Man, I'm telling you, I've never. I haven't even seen her naked. Well, in she's house. getting it somewhere. She's got to be wife. with this guy. He's taking care of her. I'm sure. Yeah, right. Who knows? All I know is, 
I learned the reason that I still have a wife is because I learned a secret. Yeah. At first, the words, I would, the, the, her words would come out of her mouth, and I'd get him to, I would eventually get them to go over my head. Right. <laughs> now I've gone and I've. I've gotten to the part where I can control her words. I, the words leave her mouth. They don't even hit my ear. Really? It's like, Chippy, did you hear something? Well, did you I guys... An later. Well, did you hear something? Did you oh, guys just listen to the Mel Gibson tapes? You understand. You just wanted a blowjob. He's supporting this woman. I mean, on some level, did you understand where the anger was coming from, guys? He has a heart on. He didn't want to jack off well, anymore. I have no idea. If he fell off his wall, he'd break his neck 50 yeah, exactly. times. I understand that. And, right. she, and she might be... Uh, She's mother of some of his kids, right? Right. One. Oh, oh, I thought I you think said once girlfriend. You have ch- uh, once you have children together, we have to stay out of that. Saying that marriage is so important, it's up to guys. A, a couple, the couple. Would you ever consider letting Mel move into Stephen's house with you guys and he we maybe like hanging a fun out? Guy. I sounds wouldn't like- even consider him getting in the car with me. <laughs> 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 For one, I'm a Jew. Right. <laughs> yeah, you don't like him. Yeah, no, you don't like me. <laughs> right. Uh, Ralph has a question for you boys, and then, of course, uh, we'll, we'll uh, get to the music. Uh, Ralph, go ahead. Hey, now. Hey, now. Uh, kind of two questions. Did did Kinnison have a big rig? No. He, it was thick, according but, to Justin And Trust me, when you do a lot of blow, it just, like, it's like a thimble. It's a thimble. <laughs> Where did you see Kinnison's rig? Were you uh, oh, orging oh. with Sam? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and he took his pants off, and there was nothing there. He ran around. around the house, jumped in the pool naked many a night. <laughs> yeah. And uh, his rig was nothing to break. He was no Steven Tyler. He was no Chips and <laughs> No chips up. Definitely no Steven Tyler. Yeah. Definitely no Slash. So talented, though. So funny. So funny. He's so, so ta- great. He had a very firm erection, did he not? I, when it was in my mouth, oops. Oh, gee, I thought we were just slip. talking. I was going to say, I kind of felt crazy. it between my fingers. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes, brother. The other question is, is there any guy in your life that you haven't seen his cock? <laughs> yeah, Steven has a way. I'm afraid uh, to hang Howard. around with this guy. Howard. This guy's going to see my cock. I've got to see your cock. I've got to show you my cock. Yeah, I have to see it. At the break. Before oh. the day is over. I will see how it turns cock. All right. <laughs> Let's go to Jimmy. Jimmy, go ahead. The new book. We're celebrating Stephen Adler's book, My Appetite for Destruction, the great drummer of Guns N' Roses, and now with his new band with Chips Enough, Adler's Appetite. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, hey, Stephen. Hey, Jim. Have, have, have you ever taken a dick in your butt or mouth as an adult to get drugs? No. Never to. When you were your I most didn't desperate. have to. He got, I sold 100 million records. Jesus Christ. You're not kidding. You had money. Okay, yeah, I didn't have to. You only took See, it for that, love. That, 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 it was David Lee Roth. Come on. Right. And he man, still owes me 100 right. bucks. David Lee Roth. What are you talking yeah, about, Diamond David Dave. Dave. What about, did you, No, you're making a joke. Yeah, of course I am. You ever see Diamond <laughs> Dave's rig? Yeah, I have. You have? I fucked a few girls with him. You oh fucked a few God. girls with Diamond oh, Dave? Oh, yeah. Did lines of coke this long. And and did Diamond... Well, he got a firm rig. He does. <laughs> yeah. He's no slasher or, or Steven Tyler, but, <laughs> but me and him could get along together. <laughs> He's in the second tier, uh, David Lee. He's got a big rig, but it ain't uh, legendary. No, it ain't oh legendary. Oh, my God. Isn't that something? He's huh? legendary. Yeah. Man, you fuck so many girls with other guys. It's crazy, huh? You ever fuck... Well, uh, look at pornos. That's what they're all about. Did Isn't you ever that what everybody wants to do? Steven, did you ever fuck a girl, like, at the same time? Like with Slash, like was she doing, like putting you in the mouth and he's doing her in the vagina? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And Izzy was taking her from behind. No, three way. There's three way. Oh, yeah. So every Izzy, hole and, and even the belly button was full. Izzy, <laughs> Izzy was in her. Yeah, my uh, my like Stephen, this so is full. a very big revelation. Stephen, you, you are, you're in her mouth, uh, Slash is in her vagina, and Izzy would be in her asshole. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow. it would go around in circles. Because it's <laughs> a lot of contact between men, too, you know? It's, it's kind of crazy. I'd have a hard time getting aroused during that. You ever share a woman at the same time with Kinnison? Yeah. You did? What about David Lee Roth? Yeah. I did a couple of them. No kidding. Yeah. David Lee knows how to fuck, huh? Yes, he does. <laughs> Eddie Van Halen ever partake? No, no. I only partied with him. Ever see his rig? Never seen the little fella's rig. Yeah. Wonder if he had his big rig or not. I bet you I he did. I know. He got little hands. Actually, well, he got really big hands. The little, the little fella's got big hands, too. Yeah, Valerie, liked <laughs> Valerie liked it. Valerie liked it for a while. Liked it. Wow. Were there any other members of Guns N' Roses that had gay sex? No, no, of course not. <laughs> uh, let's go to Dave. Dave has a question. Everyone's anxious to talk to you guys. It's so. usually one out of five. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's go to Dave. Dave, go ahead in Boston. Hey, now. What's up, guys? Hey, now. Hey. hey. First of all, I just want to say I'm not surprised that Ralph Sorrell is calling up asking about penis size. <laughs> <laughs> but, However, but the other thing I, want, I just want to, you guys are always talking about the five best guitarists ever. I want to know who are the five best drummers of all time. Steven, uh, first you. Who are the best drummers of all time? Roger Meadows Taylor from Queen. Queen. 
Mm-hmm. Peter Chris, John Bonham. Peter Chris Keith from... Keith Moon from Kiss. No kidding. That was... Really? He was oh, that yeah. great. Oh, Peter Chris, about... amazing. Yeah. He, he got such a great swing. Listen to those old Kiss songs. John Bonham. John Bonham. Absolutely bonzo. Who else? Who are the other two? <sighs> Give me two more. Yeah, Alex Van Eyck. Oh, oh no. <coughs> I'm sorry. Taylor Hawkins. Yes, yeah, a Foo Fighters. Fighters. Yeah, amazing. I finally got to meet him. I didn't right. get to fuck anybody with him, but I did get to meet him. <laughs> he rig. did tell me he fucked a lot of girls to appetite for destruction, though. He did, that's yes, good. he did. <laughs> Who was girthier, Peter Chris or Alex Van Halen? Alex Van Halen. No, Alex I Van said Halen. Peter Chris. Peter Chris, because he's got... He's got that great swing. Don't you think Alex Van Halen is underrated? I mean, that, totally I amazing mean, player. The fucking guy. He he does on drums what his brother does on guitar. Yeah. Right, but he doesn't get he the doesn't acknowledgement. Get well, not that many drummers do. They I'm don't. I'm I'm so thankful that I'm getting. You know, I get the love and respect that I do you as should. a drummer. Were you taught as a child, or were you no. a prodigy on the drums? Yeah, no, I had to learn from. Second to second, beat to beat. Listening I learned from records. watching people, listening to records, hanging out at the clubs, the nightclubs. Never had lessons? Never had Actually, I started taking lessons about four months ago. No what? kidding. Yeah. Why? Why? You're, you're one of the Because I want to better myself. I want to be a better player. Who is teaching? Who is qualified? Sammy Alejano. He's qualified? He's an Australian teacher. Yeah, he's teaching me how to play double bass. And like, I like drummers. I don't know what his, is his name? Nice name. Sammy Alejano. Is he hung? I don't know. I haven't made. <laughs> you check out, out his man. rig. I haven't seen his rig yet. <laughs> but he plays mean drums. Wow. Who are the five best bass players? Chips enough. Well, of course, Paul McCartney. I right? was going to say number one, right? Change the name of the game there. Right. Uh, Getty Lee, terrific. Getty Lee. Uh, John Entwistle. Right. Great player. I love uh, John Deacon from Queen. I think he's very underrated. Wrote all yeah, the yeah. Band, biggest Queen, Queen songs. Queen, great band. Yeah. Yes. Greatest band. And uh, last but not least. Uh, Fleet? Fleet. Flea. Flea. Flea is yeah. a good yeah, one. Great, great All right, boys, now a real tough question. Five, vi- five vice presidents that were the best in history. Go <laughs> ahead, Stephen. All right, forget that one. I'm just kidding around. All right, let's go finally to Mark. Mark, go ahead. What's up? Hey, now. Hey, Howard, this is a great interview. I love these guys. It's these boys are top notch. They're at the top of their game. Don't fuck with them. Go ahead. Yes, Mark. Uh, how, how and why is Steven still alive? He should have been dead 15 years ago. You know, Ozzy Osbourne is being experimented on as we speak. They're, they're, they're trying to figure to out. They're analyze Ozzy's brain. And all due respect to Ozzy, I love Ozzy, but they should really be examining Steven Adler. Well, I mean. the thing with Ozzy is... He's he's managed to survive it all. Yes, he has. Well, well Stephen will too. Well, you know what? It, it, believe it or not, and I've tried many, many, many times to kill yourself. It is very hard to kill yourself. Describe <laughs> in your book. You describe how many times have you tried to kill yourself? Uh, I mean, serious, dozens, dozens, dozens. And what? Why did you fail? What happened? I, I there's all I did is twice, two separate occasions. I took a hundred Valium. Go ahead. Drank a whole bottle, the big bottle of Jägermeister. Right. Shot up three fourths of a gram of heroin. Had the best eight hours sleep of my life. Wow. Woke up, everything fine. Go, I woke up going, holy crap! I can't even do this right. I'm still Check. here. It's, it's easier <laughs> to cripple yourself. Did you ever to try to yourself. hang yourself, shoot yourself, no, stab yourself? No, it's cut my wrist. You cut your wrist? Oh, yeah. And you bled and you woke up and that was the end of it? I bled, I bled for 10 seconds. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see, you really do want to live, don't wow. you? Yeah. Right. Of he does. And, and thank God. I just, you know, out. being doing this book, I was, it, it was it gave me an opportunity to get all this crap out of my system when you're and getting move the, on. When you're getting that much pussy and all the money, why would you want to die? I don't ever understand it. Because I lost it all. I threw it away. Right. And then, you, you, and, and then you hit rock bottom. I, I, had, I thought I did, but there was so much more deeper to go. Wow. What a book. What a book. What a life. What a life. <laughs> you know, this guy, when he, he used to, he, he had to go, he got such abscesses on his stomach. You'll read about it. Oh, oh. God, it suck. Oh, so yeah. they, when I mean abscesses, from shooting into his stomach, he got these, uh, like, pus yeah. welts, yeah. right? And we went to the doctor, and they had a what? They had to stab you a couple of times cut, and cut them yeah. open. Oh, and you said shit came out of those <coughs> wounds. What came out of there? Pus? Pus. Five, six different colors of pus. Ugh. Did it smell? Smelled horrific. Unbelievable. I'm going to throw up. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
the sink oh, out of it. Oh, man. <laughs> so great. Let's go to Mark. Mark, you're on the air. <laughs> hey, now. Hey, now. There's, you know, there's no other place that you could have this interview but serious. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's why, I mean, who can debate what's better, terrestrial radio or this kind of radio? This is it. I'm wondering, Stephen, where else are you going to be promoting this? What kind of stories can you tell, my brother? Well, you can clean you it gotta, up. You got to... <laughs> just, you got to get the book and read That's it. That's all. Listen, he doesn't need any other. Uh, any other. Here's Gina Chip's sister. When's the last time you spoke ah. to your sister? Oh, she's the casting director for uh, Biggest Loser. No kidding. Yeah. Hey there. Hey, Gina. Hey, Gina. Good morning, Hi. honey. Hi, Chippy. Hi, Stevie. Hi, darling. How are you? Did you know your brother had one of the biggest penises <laughs> in history of rock? He loves to tell family. Did you know that, Gina? <laughs> he brags a lot, I know, but honey. I think it's all true. I've, I've read it in books. Uh, Gina, it's legendary. Have you ever seen it? Did you see him when he was a baby? Are you older? No, 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 no. I didn't see him when he was a baby. I've actually never seen it. But <laughs> I, I, you I, never I, got I, to I, see I, your brother's I, penis. No. Not Did you ever show Gina your Gina? penis Come for on. any reason? No. When he was a baby, he didn't walk around without a diaper? <laughs> I'm way older. I wonder if it was... Oh, you are way older. Yeah. Uh, Gina, anything special about your vagina you want to uh, share with us? No, no, not in particular. But All right. And what about Gina? What about Jason? Anything about his penis oh, you want to share? Great, yeah. Uh, Gina, there's great, a couple great. of my Hi, guys. Jason. There's a couple of my guys you have to cast on that Biggest Loser because they're getting out of control with the weight. And hey, we're still having open calls in five, six cities for the next two weeks, so they should come out to one of them for sure. I'll give them a VIP pass. Very good, Gina. Thank you. Do you think they could make it on? They're getting such big people for Biggest Loser. If now. they've got at least 100 pounds to lose for men or 80 pounds for women. Hey, let me ask you something, Gina. When you're doing the casting, if you don't mind, boys, if I ask no, you no, quick, I'm curious great. about this. Sorry, I don't mean to take No, you're no, wonderful. We'll go love for you. it. When you look at the fat people, don't. I would think you got to do more of this. you got to say to yourself, gee, if they lost weight, i got to find someone who's going to look fantastic and and hot when they lose the and weight. And within the show, they could get down to a normal weight. Right. You are both 100% right. We met a girl in Denver who I pray makes the show. She was fantastic. And all I could do is look at her and say she would be so beautiful. Ah, that's the key. Right. That's See, the key. Gina, I got to tell you something. I watched the show. I know. The reason I got disillusioned these people would lose weight. They were uglier than when they started. <laughs> I was like, why are they wasting their fucking time? <laughs> you got to get people who get hot. It's Cinderella. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, Gina. Thank you, darling. All right, we Lovely girl. Guys. Love you. Give Hollywood Gilman our love. Go see, out, go see Adler's Appetite. They're amazing. They play the entire Appetite for Destruction album plus the new single, Alive. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know you did Appetite for Destruction. Yeah. Trip, oh you know God. all those songs? You got them down? Yeah, of course you guys. Learned them from Duff. How Steven is still alive. It's because he's got a whole life ahead of him yet with this is coming up. It's, it's amazing. He should be dead 20 times over, I'm sure. I tell you, you go and your brother's some bass player. Love You're you proud of him, I bet, oh right? Oh, my God. He's, he's, he, Howard, you've been a fan of his for 20 years. He's one of the years. best. It was, it was an anniversary of uh, uh, Baba Booey. He's been Boy Gary, I've been hearing him talk about since mm. for 20 years. That's so. right. All right, Gina, thank you. We love you guys, Howard. That's love Gina's you, enough. Love you, honey. Give Gina's Rob my enough. Love. <laughs> love you guys. Love you, honey. Gina's Tower enough. Two. There's enough name going on and on. <laughs> a lot. I didn't know your sister Isn't was famous. Great? She's a casting director. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. His daughter is a daughter is a big actor. Yeah. Your daughter's a big she actor. Did, yeah. My daughter Tara. She just did a uh, play, Last Little Whorehouse Texas. Yeah. Where'd she, she, she did Grease. Yeah, she did Grease. She's Where, terrific. No, no wonderful. Kidding. Yeah. Where's she's she living? L.A. Star. She's out in Newport Beach. Yeah, with her mother. Hmm. Yeah, you still talking to the mother? Yeah, get along great, just like you still talk to him. Sure. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing yes, like sir. No, no, yeah, no, I'm yeah. saying Family's yes. forever. Family. See, you know, I've been married 10 years. There's no sex going on, there's No, I? I'm married, I, I'm married. I'm like, I'm like my grandparents. My grandma has her room, my grandpa had his room, and I, they met in the middle. I'm <laughs> married, I got laid last week. Yeah. Look at me, we've been with my small rig. <laughs> All right, listen, let's listen to a little music. Uh, I'm going to play the boys out with this. This is their new single. As I said, uh, these two uh, great friends of the show, Stephen Adler and Chips Enough, come in here. They promote. They tell you what's going on. They're honest with you. And now it's time for you to listen to their music. This and, is new music. And you, I guess you could get this on iTunes. Or today. With today. The book. With get the, the book. book. Get a free download of this song. Hey, when you live at Stephen's house, if you want to have guests over, do you have to get permission from Stephen first? I guess you got to go to, you know, he's sort of the big daddy. Well, yeah, yeah. Besides, uh, you know, like uh, Dave Mancini slash this guy or Hollywood Gelman or my buddy Wendell Ray, uh, I can't bring anybody over. Oh, he, Jason. He prefers that I keep everybody out of there. But, of course, if my daughter or somebody came by to visit, he'd let him come. You're in. right with his daughter coming? Oh, in? Yeah. Yes, he loves can, my Can family. he bring his dates home or do you want him leaving the... There's no, no 
no dates. We yeah, don't have no time dates. for a date. Who gives yeah. a crap about What if dates? he gets a date? I got all my dates, and he got all his dates out in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, sounds like there are rules staying I over Stephen. So. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry you can't bring a date. I mean, maybe you talk that out with Stephen. I so. know when you asked me to come to your pad, I could have bring dates over there at the uh, little servants' quarters. Sure. Yeah. I'll stick you over. To. Stick you over at the servants' quarters. Service sure. That's <laughs> that. yeah. All right. Let's put you in a little French maid outfit. All right. Listen to me. This is the new single. It's called uh, Good to Be Alive. AdlersAppetiteOnline.com. So you you can, you'll get every information, anything that we're doing, recordings, touring, smiling. merch. Don't you love that Steven's singing through your plug? You're, you're, you're trying plugging. to sell it. <laughs> I'm saying hi to somebody. Uh, okay. I'm doing a secret hello. Uh -oh. Hi, Wendy. Oh, you <laughs> Wendy. Wendy, stay away. Thank you. All right, here we go. Good to be alive. Thanks for coming, boys. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Thank you Robin.
alive. Guys, how is it to be back on the show? Oh, wonderful. Even better than last time. Of course, we're not having sex in the green room this time, but <laughs> <laughs> it's been a great you time. You talked a lot about sex out today. That's usually what Howard likes to talk about. <laughs> That's just what guys like to talk about. <laughs> yeah, he's giving you some crap for seeing a lot of uh, other guys' rigs. Ah, who hasn't it's just seen part a lot of the of game. It's, it's part of rock and part roll. Part of rock and roll, right? <laughs> you've seen one guy naked, yeah, you've seen him all. Oh, no, wait, that's you've seen one girl naked, you want to see them all naked. <laughs> that's not a little <laughs> crazy. <laughs> now, Steven, you talked a lot about your past, you know, some heavy stuff. Is it hard to, uh, to talk about that stuff? You know, I, at first, I thought it was really going to be hard. But once I actually did it, I realized how how um, healing it was emotionally and physically and mentally to just get it out of your system. And once I said it, even like like the sexual abuse stuff and you know all that crap, it was just to say it was just like I thought it was going to be the worst feeling in my life, but it was it turned out to be the opposite, the best feeling. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for stopping by, and, and good luck with the music. Yeah, you'll be Thank seeing you. a lot more of us. I'm, I'm just hit Tim C. Being up, we're gonna have our own radio show here. So. Awesome. Looking forward yeah, to it. Looking forward to seeing you. I, oh, I want to thank Harper so. Collins too, and Vanessa and Marty and this young lady. <laughs> Did you have sex with them? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Time to close that deal. <laughs>